Welcome back. Let's start with this example. We have a 15 year annuity immediate has a first payment of $4,500 and each subsequent year, the payment decreases by $300 at an effective annual interest rate of 7% determine the future value. All right, so in this scenario, we know we're working with an annuity immediate, right? So not an annuity due. And we know that we have payments that are decreasing by a set amount, right? Our first payment is $4,500 or 4,500. And then each subsequent year, the payment decreases by $300, okay? And so since it's decreasing by that set amount of $300, we know we're working with an arithmetic decreasing annuity and not a geometric annuity, right? A geometric annuity is when your payments change by a particular percent or a particular rate every time. But in this case, our payments are changing or decreasing by a set amount of $300 every year. Okay, so we know that we have an annuity immediate and the payments form an arithmetic decreasing progression. And then finally, we know that we want to determine the future value. Okay, so now that narrows down what formula we want to use. And so we'll have that the future value is equal to this notation of capital D S N bracket I. Now, if you're not familiar with this notation, but you are familiar with the present value for an arithmetic decreasing annuity immediate, right? That formula looks like this. We have capital D A and then N bracket I. If you know what this is equal to, but you don't know this formula, you can just multiply this notation or this formula by one plus I to the power of N, right? You could just multiply this by this formula. And so this formula is N minus a n bracket i divided by i. Okay, and so you can multiply that by one plus i to the power of n, and this would get you the same answer that this notation would if you use the correct values of i and n. Okay, but we're not gonna do it that way in this video. We're going to use this notation and its respective formula to calculate the future value of this annuity. All right, and so remember that this formula represents the future value of an arithmetic decreasing annuity where each payment decreases by $1. And so since our payments are decreasing by $300, we need to multiply this formula by $300. And so I'll do that. We will have 300 times this notation or this formula. And now all we have to do is figure out our value of N and our value of I. And so what is N equal to? Well, we're told we have a 15 year annuity immediate. And so that's simple enough. We know that N is equal to 15. And then for I, our interest rate, we are told that we have an effective annual interest rate of 7%. And so I is equal to 0 0.07, right? That is 7% in decimal form. And so now before you plug these values into this formula, just check to make sure that your interest rate is being compounded at the same frequency as your payment cycle. And so we have a 15 year annuity immediate, which means that the payments are going to be made every year and we have an effective annual interest rate. And so our interest rate is compounded yearly and our payments are being made yearly. And so the frequency there matches up. And so we are good to go. If the interest rate did not match the payment cycle, we would have needed to convert our interest rate so that it did match up. But since it does match up, we can plug these values into this formula and we'll have 15 bracket 0.07. Okay, and so in order to calculate this, we need to remember what this notation is equal to. We know that capital D S N bracket I is equal to N times one plus I to the power of N minus S N bracket I divided by I. And then remember that this notation right here, this is the future value of an annuity immediate with level payments where the payments do not change. That S N bracket I is equal to one plus I to the power of N minus one divided by I. Okay, and so then if we rewrite this notation, we will have that this is equal to 300 times 15, right? 15 is equal to N times 1.07 to the power of 15 minus S 15 bracket 0 0.07 divided by 0 0.07. Okay, and so then let's use what this notation is equal to using this formula. And so we'll have that this is equal to 300 times 15 times 1.07 to the 15th power minus 1.07 to the 15th power minus one divided by 0 0.07 divided by 0 0.07, right? So this quantity right here is this notation written out in its formula form. Okay, and so if we plug all of this into our calculator, 
we will find that this is equal to $69,670.51. And so that is the future value of this 15 year annuity immediate with an arithmetic decreasing progression where each payment decreases by 300 and we started with a $4,500 payment. Okay, and so then just a quick side note before our next example, you probably noticed that this is a kind of complex calculation to maybe plug into your calculator. And so what I would recommend is that you break up this calculation into separate pieces, right? Do one thing at a time, maybe do this quantity and then subtract it from this quantity and then divide by 0 0.07. That way you don't get messed up trying to plug in all the parentheses into your calculator. Now, if you're using a financial calculator, there is an easier way to calculate this, but I'm going to leave that for a future video where I'm focused entirely on how to use the financial calculator. And so you can look forward to that, but for now, just try to break up this big calculation into smaller calculations to get this answer. All right, so next we have an annuity due pays $20 per year for 10 years and then decreases by $1 per year for 19 years. If the effective annual interest rate is 5%, calculate the present value. All right, and so this problem has a little bit more going on than the previous problem. We have an annuity due that pays a level payment of $20 per year for 10 years, right? For those first 10 years, that $20 is the same. It's not increasing and it's not decreasing. However, it does say it decreases by $1 per year for 19 years, which is going to take place after those first 10 years, right? So we're looking at a total of 29 years here. 10 years of $20 payments and then 19 years where those $20 are decreasing by $1 each year. All right, so we're gonna have two separate calculations here. We're gonna have one calculation for those first 10 years and then we're going to have a second calculation for those last 19 years. All right, and so the first thing that I would do to try and solve this problem is to draw a timeline for this scenario. I think it's gonna be very helpful in determining what types of formulas we're going to use and how we're going to solve this problem. And so if you wanna to try to draw the timeline for yourself first, I would recommend that you pause the video and do that, but I'm gonna show you my timeline right now and so see if yours looks similar to mine. All right, so I didn't write out all the years. I just wrote out the years that I thought were important in seeing what is going on with this problem. Right, so we start with level payments of $20 at year one up until year 10. And then starting with the year after year 10, year 11, our payments decreased by $1. So now we're paying $19. And then the next period we're paying $18 and this would continue on until our final two years where we have a measly $2 payment and a pathetic $1 payment. Okay, and so then it's important to note that this is an annuity due and we are calculating the present value. And so the valuation date in this case is going to be at the time of that first payment. That is where the present value will be valued. If it was an annuity immediate, then it would be at time equals zero. But because it's annuity due, the valuation date is right when that first payment is made. And so that is why the present value is calculated at time equals one. All right, so then how are we going to use this timeline to help us solve this problem? Well, just like I mentioned earlier, what I would recommend that we do here is split this up into two separate calculations. We will calculate the present value of the annuity for the first 10 years where we have the level payments, and then we will calculate the arithmetic decreasing annuity starting at year 11 for those last 19 payments. And so what we'll have here is that the present value is equal to an annuity due where the payments are $20 for 10 years. And so we will have 20 times a double dot n bracket i, where that n is going to be 10. So we'll have 10 bracket. And then our interest rate up here, we're told is an effective annual interest rate of 5%. So I'll write 0 0.05. And this is an annual rate and our payments are being made yearly. And so the frequency matches up. And so we are allowed to use both of these values here. And so this will represent the present value of the annuity due for these first 10 years where the payments are $20 every year. But then what we have to do is add this to these 19 payments starting at time equals 11 of the decreasing annuity, right? Each payment is decreasing by $1. And so we're going to use this notation. We're going to have capital D A double dot Remember, this is an annuity due, so we need to use the double dot notation and the double dot formula. And then we'll also have N bracket I, but we're going to have 19 years of these payments. So N is 19 and the interest rate is the same. And so we will have 19 bracket 0.05. 
Okay, and so we're not done yet. We have one more thing we need to account for, and that is the fact that this series of payments is starting at time equals 11. And so this present value formula right here is going to value this at time equals 11. But we want the present value of both of these annuities to be valued at time equals one. And so we need to bring this value back to the valuation date of the present value for both annuities. And so what we will do is multiply this by the present value factor to the power of 10. And that will bring back this series of payments from being valued at time equals 11 to time equals one, where the present value is being calculated. All right, and so with that, let's remove our timeline and we will move on into calculating this present value. Okay, and so first let's remember what each of these formulas is equal to. We know that a double dot n bracket i is equal to one minus v to the power of n divided by one minus v. And then we also know that v to the power of n is equal to one divided by one plus i to the power of n. And then we also know that capital D a double dot n bracket i is equal to n minus a n bracket i. And that is divided by one minus v. All right, and so then we can use these three formulas to calculate this present value. And so we will have that this is equal to 20 times one minus v to the power of 10 divided by one minus v plus 19 minus a 19 bracket 0 0.05 divided by one minus v times v to the power of 10. And so one more formula that I forgot to mention is this one right here. We need to know a n bracket i and that's gonna be the same as this formula, except the denominator will be i. And so we know that a n bracket i is equal to one minus v to the power of n divided by i. All right, and so then if we rewrite all of our present value factors, as well as this notation and its present value factor, we will have that this is equal to 20 times one minus one divided by 1.05 to the power of 10, divided by one minus one divided by 1.05 plus 19 minus one minus V to the power of 19 divided by 0 0.05 divided by one minus one divided by 1.05. And then we can rewrite this present value factor to be one divided by 1.05 to the 19th power. And that will be multiplied by one divided by 1.05 to the power of 10. All right, so I'm going to erase all of these side formulas. We do not need them anymore. And so this is our entire calculation for the present value of this annuity due that starts out with level payments and then switches to an arithmetic decreasing progression. All right, and so before we calculate this by putting it into our calculator, I just wanna make note of one thing I forgot to mention is that we didn't multiply this notation by anything right, we didn't multiply it by 20 because this represents the present value of an arithmetic decreasing annuity due where each payment decreases by $1. And so this doesn't need to be multiplied by anything because our payments are decreasing by $1. If they were decreasing by more than $1, then we would have needed to multiply this by that amount, but in this case, we don't need to. All right, and so if I calculate this part of this answer first, we will have that this is equal to $162.16, and there are some more decimals there, but I'm gonna round it off just for the sake of having enough space, and that will be added to $145.21, and some more decimals, and that is multiplied by this present value factor here, which is equal to 0 0.6139, and some more decimals, and so if we use as many decimals as we can for all of these values, we'll have this value plus this value times this value, we will have that this is equal to $251.30. And so that is the present value of this annuity due in this scenario. All right, and so once again, when you do each of these calculations, be sure to break them up into smaller pieces so that you are less likely to make a mistake. And of course, be on the lookout for that financial calculator video so that you can see how you would calculate these with a financial calculator so that you can save a lot of time. All right, and so with that, this was the last example for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for now. So I will see you next time.